Welcome to the Theta Oil Field Services Road Pumping Optimization video podcast. This is John Zvinos. The following is a presentation given at the 2009 Permian Basin Artificial Lift Forum. This is on uh, conditions that result in incomplete pump village. Uh, what I'm talking about, if you look at this pump card, this is a pump card, and I'm talking about what happens between the pump card at C to D when the pump is acting like a compressor. The pressure inside the pump barrel uh, exceeds the discharge pressure and that allows the traveling valve ball to pop open and come off the seat at, at, at uh, point D. So we're going to be talking about what happens in the pump between, between C and D. Uh, here are the three conditions that uh, result in incomplete pump fillage. And we have, we have terms for this. Uh, pump card number one, we call a, a fluid pound card. It's unanchored tubing. Uh, because the slope of the line here has got uh, uh, the loads are up near the maximum loads they should be based on uh, pump in, fluid level at the pump intake. And we compress a little bit of gas inside the pump and we have a sudden drop in load. And that sudden drop in load typically is what we call, is what we call the fluid pound. But um, we'll talk about that, that more. So the next type of card we see here has incomplete pump fillage from C to D. We call that gas interference and that's because we got a uh, fairly high pressure gas inside the pump and the and the, as the plunger moves down, we're increasing the pressure inside the pump until finally at point D, uh, we uh, have the pressure inside the pump very high enough to open the trailing valve and, and release the fluid to flow into the tubing. And then the, then the third type of incomplete pump fillage, which is a little less commonly seen and uh, sometimes misdiagnosed, is what a condition we call either blocked intake or the flow into the pump is choked off. And that's where the flow through the standing valve is zero or uh, less than the plunger displacement. And what you see here is you see uh, a pump card where the loads are up near the maximum loads on the upstroke from the pump card, but then there's this sudden fluid pound shape, and you see the fluid pump card should be here at a much lower height because the fluid levels, there's, there's fluid above the pump. So there's, we have, you have high pump intake pressure, but the pump card looks like it has zero pump intake pressure, which it does because the intake to the pump is blocked, and often you see this this negative load where the plunger collides with the liquid and, and has this negative impact load when, you, uh, when the plunger hits the fluid. And you don't really see a negative impact load here when you have, when you have fluid pound or when you have gas interference. Uh, this transfer of load from C to D is, is due to um, uh, compression of the fluids inside the pump barrel. And so the load here at C is the discharge pressure minus intake pressure times the area of the pump. Um, uh, the load here at D is, is the fluid load zero because the, uh, it's the intake pressure minus discharge pressure where the pump, when the pressure inside the barrel is the same as the pressure above. So there's no differential pressure acting across the pump. So we have no load at, at D where we have the full fluid load at point C where there's the pressure inside the barrel is the well pressure, intake pressure, and the discharge pressure above, above the traveling valve here. Uh, when we talk about these pump cards, um, Typically, we, we show our pump card with plots on the zero load line on the downstroke, which represents that the pump doesn't apply any, any load to the, to the rods on the downstroke. And so we call, we call that a, a, a reference line. So here's our, our zero load reference line, and typically our pump cards will plot and set on the zero load reference line on the downstroke. And then another reference line we have is based on the fluid level shot. If you take a fluid level shot and you measure intake pressure and you can calculate discharge pressure, you know the area of the pump, then you can theoretically calculate the load that the, that the pump should be applying to the rod string based on the fluid level, and this is the load that we measured based on the pump card, and so the pump card should typically rest between um, the zero load line, seven zero load, load line, and go up to the F FO from the fluid level, and this, this height of the pump card we, we call the fluid load. And then, then the other reference line that we have here is called the maximum fluid load line, or FO max, and that's calculated by assuming that there's zero pump intake pressure, and that's the maximum load that the pump could apply to the rod string if there's no help from the well and the fluid is at the pump and you're having to lift the fluid all the way from the pump intake to the surface. So that, that's this, this FO max line. And that's typically the maximum height the pump card would be. Uh, so if, if you have these three different conditions, if you have fluid pound, then the rod loading is near FO max, the pump intake pressure is low and the pressure inside the pump barrel is the intake pressure and you see here that FO from the pump car is near FO max and FO from the fluid level is near FO max when you have fluid pound conditions. 
if you have gas interference conditions, then the, the FO from the fluid level is pretty close to FO from the pump card, if you have the correct tubing fluid gradient and some other calculations. And FO from the pump card is somewhat away from FO max, and FO from the fluid level is away from FO max because there's, there's a distance from here to here that the wells provide the pressure to lift the fluid, and here the, the rods have to lift the fluid. That's the height of the pump card. And then when you, have the choke, when you have the choke flow into the pump or blocked intake, the pump card goes up to FO max, up to the FO max load line, and then uh, it looks like a fluid pound card. Um, the rod loading is high, but the pump intake pressure is also high, which results in a, a, a reference line called FO from the fluid level that's far away from FO max, which indicates that we have a high fluid level on the outside of the pump card, but we have zero pressure at the intake of the pump, which means that there's no transfer of fluid into the, from the fluid on the outside into the pump. Some kind of blockage exists. Uh, so this is our diagnostic pump card shape, and we typically see um, a sudden drop of load when we, when we, we say we pound fluid, a sudden release of load. Um, that's typically when we start to see our, our rods start to buckle during that transfer of load. Um, you, you should shoot a fluid level, make sure that the fluid level is uh, at the pump intake or near the pump intake when you see this type of card. This is anchor tubing and unanchored tubing. Uh, the nice thing about a card like this, if you, have, if you, if you turn the well on, if it's being down for 10 minutes, and it starts off and pumps full for a while, and then it pumps off, that means this problem of pounding fluid can be corrected by a percentage timer pump off controller to reduce run time and only pump when the pump's full, and that'll r reduce costs and, and increase efficiency. So what you should see when you have a fluid pound card, you should see a card that's incompletely filled, uh, and you should see a fluid level near the pump intake. Uh, this is the gas interference type pump card, and what you should see on a gas interference type pump card, you still you see a compression curve from C to D when we're compressing the gas inside the pump. When the, when, the, when the gas compression is happening from C to D, the plunger is slowing down and the rods are buckling, and you tend to get rod on tubing wear, and you have, tend to get more holes in your tubing when you have gas interference. Um, what you typically see, the pump card is, the FO from the pump card is, is away from the maximum load line, and you have a fluid level above the pump. So when you, when you do a dynamometer card, you see your in, incomplete pump fillage uh, curve looks like this, gas compression from here to here, uh, from transferring load, from here's the loads on the rods, here we transfer it onto the tubing, that's our gas compression. FO from the fluid level is a long way from FO max.